What is up, everyone? This is Pete, and I am playing Risk Global Domination on Steam. And today we are playing the Pangea map, which is the map of the week. So I really enjoy this map. Um, it is 65 territory, so I always have a propensity for uh, appreciating the larger maps and ones that... Um, are geographic in nature. So here is the breakdown of the continents. Africa's worth 11 in the center. We have Oceania and, Ar and Antarctica in the eastern corner. Five territories total worth four if you hold them all. So this is where everyone naturally gravitates, similarly to Australia in the classic map. Asia is spread over this northern bit and the far western section, which is the, of the two poles where I like to hang out. North and South America each worth five. North America has slightly less territories and Europe worth six in the middle. So the map has two corners. One is valuable, one is less valuable. So I like to hide, if I can, in the far west. The other place I like to hide is in the center. So West Africa, unlike uh, the modern uh, world is actually very valuable in this map because it has a ton of little territories and since this map is so large um, you can start getting real value through reinforcement if you just hold enough meat um, so what I like to try to do okay orange tries to break the bots continent and fails what I like to try to do is I like to try to slowly expand but try and uh, keep more than I lose on balance and that's how in, in lieu of holding continents that's how I like to sort of accrue value slowly in the early game so first position we have a bot second position we have uh, what looks like a pretty good intermediate or an expert orange went offline okay and in the final position we have worse ranked okay so my um, my human opponent that I should be afraid of is blue if I put my troops right here and just knock them out of that corner, that's one less position for me to worry about, and I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start uh, slowly trying to expand in the far west. And we'll see how that plan goes. What purple are we going to do is they're going to go around here. Maybe they're going to try and break over. I'm just going to move one over that way with an eye to maybe consolidate this into my main position, which will be established in the e in the west. So, where does purple go? Based on their yeah, so they they go into the Australia as I expect. Based on their uh, win loss ratio, I, I would expect them to be a beginner, maybe an intermediate, but not high. Blue is more likely ranked around intermediate or expert. Winning a third of your games is quite good. Okay, purple takes Australia, but doesn't break Antarctica, which means Antarctica is just going to punch them right back. Or no. Yep. So here we have one of my opponents fighting with a bot. And the other one, the blue player, is the one I'm actually worried about. And we'll see where they go. I don't like any of my moves out here, so maybe on my next turn I'm going to try and consolidate these twos into each other. I do have 12 territories, which means I'll be reinforcing four next turn as long as I don't lose any more. Alright, looks like Blue is establishing a South American position. So they'll either pull the three in or they'll pull the two in. Yeah, okay, good. That will distract them for a while. Let Blue worry about consolidating their, their piece of the board. You, the, unlikely to my eye that they will hold South America and yet the bonus. As usual, I do not recommend going for continents in progressive cards. I think the effort that you go through to try and take them uh, means that you likely will not hold them. So you're wasting troops. For no real benefit. Okay, looks like I keep. Okay, well they moved one out. That's that's a fine expansion. I'll take that one spot this turn. And this will encourage Green to continue to attack the other direction. 
and then I can consolidate into there over the next couple of turns. And that's exactly what I want to be doing. Taking up space on this board. And not really incentivizing my opponents to retaliate. Okay, purple says, fuck that, and they're going to finish out that corner. But leave themselves very thin to either orange or blue breaking. This corner is always hotly contested. It's like the uh, the quintessential fight over Australia in classic. You really don't want to fight an Aust over Australia in this board either. Seems like a losing battle more often than not from where I'm sitting. I mean, if it's completely unoccupied and uncontested, I'll take it because it is very valuable. Four bonus for five territories. I mean, that's that is a sweet deal, but as far as I can tell, it's very rarely worth that. Juice ain't worth the squeeze because this happens. Now I have both of my human opponents fighting amongst each other, which is way better. Because that's going to distract them enough to let me just slowly expand and take over before they know it all own half the board. And that's my prediction for how this game is going to go. Let's see how close that prediction is to reality. Alright, hopefully green reinforces and pops out. Okay, do they do anything with that three? I think I need to take out that three regardless. So I think that's what I do on my turn. No, I don't like it. I'm going to put my troops here into my other army and we'll do it next turn. Because now I have a big enough army to just lock out the rest of this position. All right, purple says fuck you. It hits blue back, and now they are spinning their wheels against each other. Just what I want to see. Blue is under twenty troops. Yellow is looking really fish. Okay, so yellow only has twelve troops in this one central position, right about where I'm at. Can I capitalize that? Probably not until the first match is spent. But yellow does that right now. Okay, back above 20, but they spent their first cards. To do it, try to take Europe, fail to do so. I should pull this three out, because that's also a piece of the Europe continent in this map. What does blue do? Blue matches to punch purple. Ooh, that is a bad use of a match. Never match for board position. Always match if you can defeat an opponent. This is the one of the cardinal rules of progressive. Also, you've left purple now with all of their cards, so they're just as likely to retaliate against you. So cool, you broke the continent, you gained no advantage board-wise. Purple does the exact same move you just did and takes it all back, and you're even worse off than when you started. There is no reward to playing board police. Do not do it. Well, they put that four in cute. You guys just keep fighting amongst yourselves. I love it. Okay, orange matches too. We got a lot of early matching going on. Green is down to 15 troops. Just by being conservative, I have uh, the most troops in this board. We lose a bit of North Ham right now. Yeah. Okie dokie. That's fine by me. I really do like how that cookie crumbled. Okay, so. I think I'm going to hit green and orange. Pop, pop. Give purple a chance to do something with these four troops before I eliminate them next turn. But, of course, they have bigger fish to fry. Green's going to take them out of their last piece of North America next turn. And I'll take them out of there, and then they'll be stuck in the eastern, or the, uh, eastern half of the board. As predicted, purple matches early and retaliates against blue. So blue is now really on the back foot. Very typical behavior. I've seen it now enough to know not to get involved in fruitless fights. 
fighting for the sake of fighting, you know. Oh, he has a continent. Better stop him. Who wins in the end? When you fight a war of attrition, who wins in the end? Okay, yellow is one piece away from taking the Europe continent. Whatever blue does now is kind of immaterial. Keep popping, though, so you build up cards for me when I eventually kill you. If blue's territory here is removed, then they have all of their units locked in this position. That seems to be a good thing to do. Blue is thinking. Clumsy guitarist, 69, 563, playing a little clumsy as well. Did they disconnect? One thing I'm not so sure, I think they're slow rolling us. When players disconnect, they, they I don't think they're showing it quite so quickly anymore. Like they used to say this player's offline almost immediately, but uh, right now it doesn't look like it. It looks like uh, uh, blue dipped, which means they won't get an attack this turn, which means they won't build up a card. They just make it, they just make it in time. So uh, blue has gone offline. Yes, I'm offline, so you can see. You can see um, uh, bots don't put arrows in when they attack. That's how you know that uh, the player has gone offline. Okay, so it's me versus purple. And purple has matched. Okay, green matches early. So I am last to match. Everyone has put in early. Yeah, I want to defeat blue. So how do I do that? I think I move here. I don't think my attack point is going to be there. That might just be to pick off the two. I think my attack point is going to be one of these uh, African positions. Matching it, I'll be putting in 15 cards, which is enough, I think, to defeat blue. Yellow is also in range. Yeah, whatever purple does, I think, at this point is irrelevant. I mean, let them reinforce that extra four troops a turn. I'm holding 16 territory, so I'm also reinforcing a bit extra. But they fought so hard to uh, regain their territory, to regain their continents after being broken multiple turns back to back. Yellow finally succeeds at taking Europe. Sure. I mean, 17 for 3 right next to my big army. I gotta go for that one first. Yeah, go like this, match in, finish. I think that's the move. I'll kill yellow first, because they're just in a straight line. Kill yellow, match. Kill blue, match. Seems like a good turn. I'm going to give purple the good game now, just so I can click through and do my thing. Oh, 
maybe I kill orange? Can I do it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's go for orange. Hmm, I didn't see that. Nah, I see. I'm not set up. I'll just punch uh, my my last human opponent really hard. Oh, I guess really hard means killing them. Okay, I'll take that. That's a win. Cool. Only bots left. I win, I win this game. So, I don't get to show you guys uh, late game strategy for Pangea, but um, you can assume that it is very similar to uh, late game strategy for the rest of the larger boards. Yeah, whatever the bots do now is immaterial. I'll mop them up next turn. And so there you have it. A pretty textbook uh, situation. Have my opponents fight amongst themselves. I love seeing battles of attrition that I am not involved in. figure that they could have programmed the AI to do something in the late game, but I would also guess that I, I imagine most people don't actually want a good AI opponent uh, in risk, so. How do you kill six? Double the troops? You think that's enough? Twelve on six? Let's see. 12 on 6 is 96. Pretty good. And here we go. Let's take out one of my two opponents now and get the other one. Next turn, through my Natch bonus, come up with something. Game. Yeah, I love this Pangea map. Not the easiest to get uh, a six player in fire, but uh, with a little bit of patience, I seem to be having an okay time. Uh, today is Wednesday, so I've been enjoying it. Um, you know, three, four, maybe six games a day this week so far. I really have a affinity for the larger boards. So, what was that, like turn eight? Victory. All right, expert was blue. Intermediate and beginner. All right, we went up to 1,319 in rank. Feeling good about that. I should just play a bunch of Pangea all week, and I'll probably crack the top thou again. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope some of it was uh, educational and entertaining. And uh, until next time, for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.